The way exams work means that whoever has a better memory wins the game. And well, life isn't that kind and a lot of us probably have a pretty average memory. So when the results come in, we hear a lot of, Dobinder, your cousin got 100%, why can't you be more like him? Well, the good news is I learned how to transform my pretty average memory into something that could recall all of preclinical medicine in just one day. And even better news is I can teach you how to do the same. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name's Shane. I'm a recently qualified doctor and neuroscience supervisor at Oxford. University and today I'm going to change your life. Almost all of the exams we'll do in our lifetime is really just a test of memory. And let's be real, it can take us a lifetime to memorize this stuff. Now I don't know about you, but I'd rather spend my time doing anything but memorize for exams. I just want to memorize things quick and fast so I actually have some time to do what I actually enjoy. So how did I win at this game? I became Brown Mike Cross and developed a superhuman memory. Okay, not quite, but I did develop key strategies that helped me speed up my memorization process and helped it stick for longer. Now before I go on to my process, let me briefly explain the cognitive neuroscience behind memory. So in cognitive neuroscience, we like to break down memory into three key stages. There's the initial encoding phase where information is gathered and put into memory memory stream. Then secondly, there's the maintenance phase, where information is practiced and rehearsed to shift it into the longer term stores. And finally, there's recall, where information is taken out of the memory stores into consciousness. So in this video, I'm going to walk you through my scientifically legit strategies that help me improve each of these three stages. Trust me, I'm a doctor. Encoding of information is something your brain has to go through when it comes across information for the first time. It'll first try to make sense of it, also known as understanding. If it can understand it, it gets encoded relatively easily. However, sometimes the fact is far too complicated for the brain to comprehend it, and it would take just too much time for you to try and understand it. So the brain tries to blindly encode the information. This is where trouble begins, because trying to memorize information you don't understand is like trying to hang Christmas decorations onto a non-existent tree. It's just gonna keep falling off. Now sure, you can spend a lot of time trying to understand something in the hope that you'll grow your tree. At that point, you have something that you can pin your memory onto, and this time it'll stay. But it's kind of costly, especially when the exam only wants the fact. What I'm trying to say is understanding the fact is like the holy grail. It's the ideal way to ensure reliable encoding of information. But that comes as a time and effort cost, which often doesn't get rewarded in exams. The exams don't really care that you know why it's called a toga virus. They only care that you know it is. So instead of trying to use understanding as my tree, I use blind associations instead. The two blind associations I used most often were idea associations and sound associations. Here's how they work. I would essentially create a list of all the facts I needed to remember. Then I tried to create a story out of it. Essentially, that'd be a main character who went about a pretty crazy day. Then I'd pin along all of the facts I needed to remember using idea and sound associations. Let me give you an example. So this is the story I created to remember all the different causes of shortness of breath. An example of idea association is when the bee comes along and stings asthmatic Andy. Now, we know that people can be allergic to bee stings. So the bee sting acts as an idea association because it helps me think of anaphylactic reaction or allergic reaction. An example of sound association is when the superhero flash comes along. The word flash helps me to think of flash pulmonary edema because of the sound association. Here's another example of the story I made to remember the different causes of flank pain. In this story, Flank Fergus heads to the seaside to go sailing. On his way at the beach, he sees a muscle and via the sound connection, that helps me to think of muscular pain. Then as he's walking along the beach, he trips over a stone. And via the sound association, that helps me to think of kidney stones. And the medical term for kidney stones is nephrolithiasis. In this way, my story is acted as a tree for me to hang on the different facts to. And this process works so well at rapidly encoding information because our brain is very good at remembering vivid stories, but it's pretty poor at remembering bland facts. The next method I used to rapidly encode information was called the journey method. And the journey method is all about taking a mental journey along a route that you're familiar with. And you essentially pin the facts and memories onto the different locations within your journey. It can be familiar places like your house or the journey you take to school, or it can be an abstract concept like the journey food takes from the mouth all the way down to the bottom. For example, I chose the journey method to learn the different causes of abdominal pain. And the journey I chose was the journey taken by food all the way from the mouth to the bottom. The first 
place the food goes to in the abdomen is the stomach. So I'm following the journey of the food and it heads to the stomach. That triggers me to think of all the different pathologies associated with the stomach. Things like gastritis, stomach ulcers, etc. Then the food heads along to the duodenum, which is the first part of the small intestines. And at this point, I also think of all the other structures around it, like the pancreas, as well as the liver and gallbladder. And then I think of all the different pathologies associated with that. Like this, I rapidly encode a lot of information based on the journey the food bolus takes. In this way, by using the journey method, I had the different locations which acted as the tree for me to hang on the different facts to. I found that this strategy massively sped up the encoding process, but it also massively sped up my recall. Essentially, the organo location would act as a prompt and that would cause me to think of all the different conditions. And I found that having these prompts was a very good way to speed up my recall. Anyway, more on recall later. Let's now take a look at the next method of rapid encoding. The next method I used quite a lot was known as the mnemonic method. Mnemonics are a great way of converting a lot of information into easy to remember singular words. For example, to remember all the questions to ask someone who comes in with chest pain, I use the mnemonic POPSAC. Now, when I thought of chest pain, it helped me to think of POPSAC because I think of the heart like a sac that pumps blood around the body. And when you have chest pain, it kind of pops. I know it's a bit sad, but it worked for me. And the individual letters would represent the different questions I'd have to ask. And sometimes the mnemonic would be just outright silly. I found that silly it was, easy I could remember them. For example, to remember the different symptoms of depression, I used the mnemonic May Swag Cat. By using the mnemonic method, each letter acted as its own specific prompt. And it also allowed me to know exactly how many conditions or questions I had to ask. This type of decoration was just to make a point. I'd I wouldn't recommend decorating your tree like this. This process helped me encode a lot of information very quickly and very reliably. I wasn't spending time faffing about trying to understand things that didn't really require too much understanding. Now, of course, the disclaimer here is that this works really well for these kind of facts. But other things that do require a lot of understanding, you actually need to bite the bullet and try to commit some time to it. However, the advantage is if you sped up the memorization process for a lot of bland facts that doesn't require understanding. So what that means is you now have much more time available to research the things that actually require understanding. Now the next step after encoding the information is maintenance. Maintenance is all about maintaining all of the information you've encoded. You want to make sure it sticks within the memory stores and don't kind of just fall out. What you want to avoid is going back to the slower stage. Now we've all heard about the big Don Ebbinghaus and its forgetting curve from the even bigger Don Ali Abdul. So we know that as time passes, we're bound to forget things, but we can interrupt this by practicing it and making sure it stays within the memory stores. So maintenance phase is all about aggressive Simply going through the things you've encoded over and over again to make sure it stays within the memory stores. Now, of course, this will take up some time, but it's a hell of a lot faster than the encoding process. And eventually you'll get to a stage where it's encoded into your long-term memory. And at that point, you can go through even a few weeks without practice and still recall it just as fast as before. Which brings me onto the final stage of the memorization process, which is recall. Ultimately, you want the recall of information to be very rapid and very specific. Yeah, this one. Now in the exams, you don't really want to go through all your associations just to find the final fact from your story. You instead want to be able to go specifically to the fact you're interested in and pull it out. So how can we achieve this rapid and specific recall? The best strategy is something known as the testing effect. This is when you expose yourself to loads of different past exam questions and actually do them and mark them to give yourself some feedback. So in the exams, you're not wasting too much time trying to figure out what the exam question is wanting. Instead, you can very rapidly and specifically go straight to the fact you know it's after. And that process is known as recognition and that's much faster than active retrieval. If you want to learn more about this testing strategy, you might like to check out this video. But that's it for me for today. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Oh, and uh, Merry Christmas.